Salwete de Scipuli. This is Mickey Strabetti, and this lesson is all about the verbs. So we'll start off with looking at our personal endings. The first person most often will end in O, sometimes it will end in M, and you would translate it as I plus whatever verb it is. So I run, I talk, I walk, I see. Uh, S is the second person singular, so you verb. T is third person singular, he, she, or it. You may not have seen this before, subject. Uh, this refers to anything that the subject might be. So it could be groomio, it could be boy, girl, uh, mother, whatever. Uh, mus means we, tis is you all, so second person plural. Please get used to writing out you all so that I know you know this is the different from tis versus s. So you is you singular, you all is you plural. And t is they or subjects as in mom and dad or the boys plural. All right, and here's an example of it, these endings being attached to an actual verb, specifically in the present tense. We have our three principal parts here, porto, portara, portawi, but porto, is right here. The first person singular present active indicative is the first principal part. For the rest of them, you look at the second principal part, which is the infinitive. You drop the RE, then you add your personal endings, which we covered in the previous slide. So portas means you carry. Portat is he, she, or it carries. Portamus, we carry. Portatus, you all carry. Portant, they carry. For example, we have grumio canom quoquit. Grumio is our subject. Grumio cooks dinner. This is an example of the whole subject carries. You wouldn't use he, she, or it here. You don't supply a pronoun because we actually have a stated subject. Here, however, we don't have a stated subject. The fact that the verb ends in an O means that it's I. So I am holding money. Caritis, tis is our ending, so we use you all. So you all are running into the kitchen. Next, we have the uh, irregular verb to be, sum es afui. This is, all, this is the present tense. So he, we have our ending, m, means I am, s, you are, est, he, she, it is, sumus, we are, estist, you are, sunt, they are. Um, uh, the, verb, the regular verb to be actually isn't as irregular as a lot of people think um, because we do have a pattern for our endings. SU is used three different times, and then ES is used three times as well. So it's not as irregular as most people think. Some examples, nona estis contenti, are you not satisfied? You all, I should say, not just you. Uh, Quoquus est in Kalina, the cook is in the kitchen. Mater et pater sunt laiti, so mother and father are happy. Next, we have the imperfect tense. I'm going to go back to Porto uh, just to, to be consistent in my example. In green, we have our personal endings here. M means I, S means you, singular, so on and so forth. The A here, this is our thematic vowel. Some people like to call it the glue that holds your base to your um, personal endings. And then we also have a BA, the items in blue, those are your tense indicators. This BA here lets you know that you are in the imperfect tense. The way that you translate the imperfect tense is with a was plus the ing, or sometimes it'll have to be were. So I was carrying, portabas you were carrying, portabat he was carrying, portabamus we were carrying, and so forth. Some examples, seri per viam ambulabant, the slaves were walking through the street. Grumio canem timabat. Grumio was afraid of the dog. In cubiculo domie bamus, we were sleeping in the bedroom. Um, and then back to our irregular form of to be in the imperfect tense, uh, we have our personal endings, M, S, T, mus, tis, N, T, and then E, R, A is the base for all of these. So eram, eras, erat, eramus, eratus, erant, I was, you were, um, it was, we were, you all were, and they were. Some examples, Harry and Wheela Eramus, yesterday we were in the house. Eramus homines said nunc sumus umbrae, so we were humans, but now we are ghosts. Eras de scipula, you are, or sorry, you were students. All right, and now we have the perfect tense. Okay, the perfect tense comes from the third principal part. You can see that the third principal part is actually the first person singular. This and this are exactly the same. A is our glue, again, that's our um, indicator that we're in the first conjugation as well. 
for this one and for this one uh, only in the first conjugation, we have a V here. Um, it's you need to get into the habit of not rely or get out of the habit of relying on the V as an indicator for the perfect tense because most other tenses do not have this V. Um, we'll see some examples later of ones that don't. So the endings are E, isti, it, imus, istis, and erunt. So completely different personal endings than what we had before. Some examples. Clemens clamorum audiwit. Clemens heard a shout. Caecilium saluta wimus. So this mus here lets us know that we're dealing with the we. So we greeted Caecilius. Agricolae mercatorum pulsawerunt. Okay. The farmers hit the merchant. Um, a difference between the imperfect tense and the perfect tense. The perfect tense, which is what we're looking at here, um, is just a moment in time. So this is something that happened very briefly. You did not do it over an extended period of time. Whereas if I um, go back to the imperfect, the imperfect happened over an extended period of time. So um, uh, I used to run would be an example of the imperfect tense. Um, it probably happened uh, often, maybe every day, whereas um, for the perfect tense to use the word run, it would be last night I ran down the street. Just happened once, not over an extended period of time. All right, this is the most recent tense that you learned. This was stage 16 last year, the pluperfect tense. All right, so this, you get the base from the third principal part. You ignore the ending here, the I, and you have your base. So you see P-O-T, sorry, P-O-R-T-A-V on all of these. And then Eram, Eras, Erat, Eramus, Eratus, Errant, which is, if we go back, it's our irregular verb to be. This right here, the imperfect of sum esse fui, is your ending for the pluperfect tense. So that's how you get that. You use the base here from your third principal part, plus the ending is the imperfect of sum esse fui. All right, some examples. In ala erat ursa, so in the palace was a bear, quam rex ex Italia importa verat, which the king had imported out of Italy. So the way that you translate a pluperfect is you put a had in front of it. It indicates a past tense that happened before the other past tense in the verb. Here we have was, this is had. Let's look at another example. In atrio sedebant, hospites, quos ad aulam in vita veramus. So in the atrium, the guests were sitting whom we had invited to the palace. So this was translated as was sitting, or sorry, were sitting. This was translated as we had invited. All right, one more example. Salvius me puniwit quad a huila fugeram. So Salvius punished me because I had fled out of the house. So puniwit is the perfect tense, just a simple past tense. Fugeram is the pluperfect. You're gonna translate it with a had. All right, so let's look at the um, all five conjugations. We got first, second, third, third IO, and the fourth. Um, portara is our model example for the first conjugation. It has that A there as its indicator. Uh, docera is our model for the second conjugation. Notice it has an accented E. Third conjugation, our model is trahera. It has an unaccented E. The third IO also has an unaccented E in the infinitive. It, but it also it has an IO in the first principal part. So this, for example, would be capio, capera, capiwi. Uh, fourth conjugation is audira. It has an accented I. All right, some uses for the infinitive. We have two main uses right now. The complementary infinitive, meaning that it completes the idea of the main verb. We also can use an infinitive as the subject. The first example is an infinitive as the subject. So it is necessary to carry the food. Or you could put, in English, we like to put the subject first. So to carry food is necessary. So there you have it as the subject of the sentence, but it is an infinitive. All right, this is an example as a uh, complementary infinitive. So magister latinum docera volt. The teacher wants to teach Latin. Uh, this is another example of a complementary infinitive, meaning it's completing the main verb. All right, so the base is our main verb. You ought to drag the wagon to the barn.
Another example, uh, also a complimentary infinitive, diem capere cupimus. We wish to seize the day. Canes audire potestis. This is another complimentary infinitive. Um, you all are able to hear the dogs. All right, the, one of the reasons why we're starting off our big massive review with verbs is because the verb is one of the most, if not the most important part of the sentence. If you can find the verb and figure out what is going on, the person number tense um, that re can really direct you in the um, guiding, guide you in translating the rest of the sentence. So keep calm and find the verb. Walete.